A recent study is getting a lot of press for its results on diet and depression. And it's a randomized controlled trial. Look at the graphics. This is Healthcare Triage News. There have been plenty of observational studies examining the link between diet and depression. We've talked about the many problems with these kinds of studies, but there are also a handful of randomized controlled trials which you know we love. A meta-analysis of 16 of these RCTs reported significant reduction of non-clinical depressive symptoms in response to dietary interventions that aim to improve overall nutritional intake. However, most of the randomized controlled trials in this meta-analysis were not looking at depressive symptoms as a main outcome and or they were designed to compare two different diets or examine accompanying factors such as exercise and sleep. In addition, most did not examine clinical diagnoses of depression. In fact, authors of the current study point out that only one RCT to date has examined the effect of dietary intervention on individuals with a clinical diagnosis of depression. This study, called the SMILES trial, examined the effect of a 12-week dietary intervention on depressive symptoms. Improvements in the experimental dietary group were compared to improvements in a control group given social support on the same schedule over the same amount of time. At the end of 12 weeks, participants in the dietary group had significantly improved depressive symptoms compared to the social support group. The current study, published in PLOS One, used a shorter intervention in a younger age group, participants ranging from 17 to 35 years of age, with moderate or higher symptoms of depression, who habitually consumed a poor diet, were randomly assigned to either a three-week dietary intervention or to a habitual diet group. The intervention group received instructions from a registered dietitian on following a diet based on the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating and with recommendations based on a Mediterranean-style diet. They were given specific recommendations about fruits and vegetables, whole grain cereals, protein from specific sources, unsweetened dairy, nuts and seeds, olive oil, and spices such as turmeric and cinnamon. They were also instructed to decrease consumption of refined carbohydrates, sugar, fatty or processed meats, and soft drinks. The habitual control group were given no instructions and simply asked to return for evaluation after the three-week period was over. Measures taken to ensure dietary compliance included giving the participants food items, two brief phone calls on days 7 and 14 of the study, and a $60 gift card to reimburse food costs in exchange for grocery receipts. Beyond compliance questionnaires, spectrophotometry readings were taken to assess intake of fruits and vegetables. This method measures light properties in the skin, which change in response to increased fruit and vegetable intake, which seems like magic. At the end of three weeks, the experimental group reported a significant decrease in depressive symptoms as measured by the Center for Epidemiological Studies Depression Scale when compared to the control group. Many caveats, of course. We have to consider that these trials can't be double-blinded because there's no way to hide whether participants are eating healthier food. Given that we know depression can be alleviated when subjects are told that an intervention is meant to alleviate it, also known as a placebo effect, this is something to consider at a point when studies on potential mechanisms have yet to be performed. We also have to consider the difficulty of ensuring the exact level of adherence to diet recommendations. This is often hard because in nutrition research, it's generally not feasible to monitor someone's intake 24 seven over any period of time. It's probably safe to assume that the level of adherence varied from person to person. And there are other factors here besides diet. People got free food. They got money. People checked in on them. That might make a difference in depressive symptoms too. And last but not least, though the current study observed changes in processed food intake, but not changes in intake of recommended foods, to be a significant predictor of depression scores, we still have some work to do before we fully understand what components of a healthier diet and in what combination might be responsible for influencing mood. These are limitations in the study, and all studies have them. Let's focus on the good here, and there's plenty to like. More of this, please. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this other episode, which talks about antidepressants and the most recent research on whether they really work. It also helps if you like the video and subscribe down below. And another good way to support the show is at patreon.com slash healthcare triage. Our Surgeon Admiral Sam does, so does our research associate Joe Sevitz, and you can too.